thrilled to welcome back our dear friend and favorite Scott, of course, Johnny Reed. Yay! <laughs> it's so good to see you. <laughs> it's good to be seen. Good to see you too. Now, Johnny, this is your first album in four years. What was it like for you to pick up your guitar again and make music during a pandemic when it felt like the world stood still? It was a very interesting time. Um, you know, it, the, the world forced us to stop and stand still. So I found myself with a lot more time in my hands than I'm used to. Uh, so I filled, uh, I filled that time sitting with my guitar and sort of digging, digging a wee bit deeper and uh, coming up with a, a fairly introspective type album uh, that I'm extremely excited for, uh, for the world to hear. Well, everyone is excited because you're a musician and music is meant to be shared. So you're used to performing in sold out arenas in front of big crowds. And of course, we know the pandemic, like no one could perform anywhere. So when you returned to the stage back in August, it was for the first time wow. in a year and a half. What, like, what was your emotion? Can you, can you walk us through the, your feelings? It was, uh, it was very emotional for me. Uh, if, if anybody's ever come see us play before, they'll understand that uh, I leave it. I always leave it on the stage. You know, I've always believed that. Uh, you know, what if this is my last show? You know, uh -huh. so I just I, I did my best to sort of just leave it on the stage. And uh, when the pandemic hit, and it, it was like somebody just took something away from me that was so natural. Uh, it it really uh, it really made me understand just how uh, fortunate I am. Uh, to be able to sing songs and tell stories and play music, you know, uh, a, a new appreciation uh, for for the gifts, the gifts that I was given. Well, listen, this album is full of beautiful lyrics expressing love and heartbreak. And I got to ask you about your songwriting method. When 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 the when the sort of impulse comes to write, does it just sort of effortlessly come out of you, or are you writing it down, then tweaking and reworking until it's just right? Well, usually, uh, you know, the, in the past, it's been you write a song, you record a song, you release a song, and you tour a song. Uh, you know, because of the situation, I was given so much time, so much more time than I usually have to live with the songs, to refine the songs, uh, to make sure that the songs that I was putting on the album, uh, that the, the entire album was one cohesive uh, piece of art, you know, yeah. which... Uh, which was nice, to be honest. It was nice to be able to have that time, to be able to, be able to really focus uh, and make sure that, that everything was exactly the way that I wanted it. Mm. Well, let's talk about love, because on Thursday, you and your wife will celebrate 21 <laughs> years of marriage. The album, <laughs> look at tits. you. The album comes out a day after your anniversary. Was that intentional? Yes, it was. <laughs> Uh, I just, I, we felt, I was given a bunch of dates. Um, I actually delivered the first version of this album. I actually delivered to the record label uh, almost a year and a half ago. Um, but because of everything that was taking place, uh, we wanted to make sure that when we released the, the record, that we could actually uh, go and take the record and take the music to the people, you know? So uh, because of that, I was given several dates uh, that I could release the record and... I thought to myself, October 14th, 2000 was when I got married. Uh, October 15th uh, sounded, like a, sounded like the right date for an album called Love Someone, you know? Oh my gosh, your wife, that is like the best gift ever. I feel like if Simon wrote an album all about love, I would assume it's about me. But how, do, how did she react when she heard this album? With her tears, uh, well, her laughter? You know, Jen, Jen and I, you know, we've been spending a lot of time together. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think I've, I think I've power washed my house seven times you know, in the past <laughs> two weeks. You know, um, we we spend a lot of time together. So she's there for the inception. You know, for the idea. I'll usually sit down in the morning and I'll say, "Hey, I've got this idea for a song. What do you think?" And then the next time she hears it, there'll maybe be a verse, two verses, a chorus. Um, so she actually, she's there for the entire. The entire process. In fact, a wee, a wee snippet here. Uh, there's a song on there called um, uh, 
now there's a, there's a few songs on there that she was she was part of. Sorry, just giving me some input. But uh, I'll be your everything. Uh, mm. She's actually singing harmonies no on the song. Uh, she just it was just by chance, but. Uh, the background singer uh, on the demo band. or on the album version, you Not can on hear the, on the actual album. What? Yeah, it goes because uh, I sing, uh, "I'll be your everything," and she says, "I'll be your love, I'll be your baby." <laughs> it's like so. She was in the studio, and the background singer never showed up. Uh, she gets stuck, and I said, "This needs to happen." And uh, I said, "Jen, you can sing. Like you can sing it." And uh, so she was. Uh, she obliged, and uh, so that's her singing on that song. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that's so I can't wait. Okay, you know what? You know, in addition to Jen's voice, the album also includes a new acoustic version of the song, People Like You, which you dedicated to the victims and survivors of the mass shooting in Nova Scotia last year. Now, this song, it's garnered up thousands of views and comments. So talk to us about the response to the song and the power of healing through lyrics. Well, the song itself, uh, I, I wrote the song shortly after, uh, actually the night that I heard about that tragedy that took place in Nova Scotia. And um, needless to say, the song was, I, I gave the song to the Red Cross up there and they just raised a whole bunch of money and awareness uh, for all the people that were impacted by that tragedy. But um, I just wanted the world to know that, uh, you know, we, we tend to talk about negativity, we tend to talk about the bad things, you know, the guy that actually committed that tragedy, you know, that guy got a lot of press, you know, that guy, there was lots of people talking about that guy, you know, but um, I just felt like I wanted to shine a wee bit of light on the good people, you know, the the people that go out their way to help people, you know, the people that wake up every day and uh, are selfless. And uh, mm -hmm. that's the only thing that I've ever experienced when I went to Nova Scotia uh, was just a, just a, a, a whole province full of, people that would give you the shot off their back, you know? So mm -hmm. I just I just wanted to write a song that, that celebrated the people, you know, and to make sure that the world outside of Canada knew that this was not reflective of uh, of the people in Nova Scotia, nor the people of Canada. Oh, amen to that, Johnny, that's beautiful. Now, now listen, the theme of love runs through every song on this album. So let's talk about love. We're gonna play a quick rapid fire with you. Are you ready? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, here we go. Do you believe in love at first sight? Yes. Okay. I will always love you, Dolly or Whitney? Whitney. Yeah. Okay, what is your love language? Touch, time, or gifts? My love language is uh, action. Uh, washing the car. Uh, <laughs> you know, emptying power the dishwasher. Power uh, washing uh, the house. <laughs> You know, washing, power washing the house, you know. These are, this is my love language, you know, making the bed. <laughs> and perfect date night, a night in or a night out? Uh, Ted Lasso on a bag of cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey, Johnny, this is so much fun always hanging out with you. Thank you for joining us. The new album is called Love Someone. It comes out October 15th. Johnny Reed. We'll be right back.